Guys, J.D. Vance just destroyed Margaret Brennan. You got to check this out. And we're joined now in studio by Ohio Republican Senator J.D. Vance. Good to have you here. Morning. A good morning to you. So you were at Mar-a-Lago recently. You were in New York at the Manhattan courtroom. You were in Ohio alongside Donald Trump at a fundraiser. I know you keep getting asked whether or not you're going to be vice president or not. And you said you haven't spoken to him about it. Sure. But we're also looking at a pretty tight race in the Senate. So I wonder, do you think you're more helpful to him in the Senate or in the White House? Well, I'll let him make that decision. Ultimately, I think he knows how to best run his presidential campaign. And what I've said is I'm happy to be an advocate for the agenda in the United States Senate. I think that's the best way for me to help the people of Ohio. I'm certainly interested in helping him in other ways if that's uh, what, what matters. Because look, Margaret, we have to reelect Donald Trump as president. The contrast is so extraordinary between higher inflation at home and war overseas. That's the Biden record. And the Trump record of peace at home and prosperity, that is an incredible thing to run on. And importantly, it's an incredible thing to deliver for our country. So I think we need to help Donald Trump get across the finish line. That's why I've spent a fair amount of time with him the past couple of weeks, helping him raise some resources, showing up in support uh, in New York. But it's all about getting him elected president. I actually don't care that much who the vice president is because Trump's also we're going to govern well you call yourself so i honestly i honestly feel like jd vance is one of those genuine people that wasn't really thirsty for the job if he gets the job he's going to take the job of course he's going to do the best he can at the job but some of the other candidates the vp candidates they were kind of thirsty to get the job they were saying anything and doing anything to try to get the job although some of them were, were pretty good jd vance was just genuine with it he was just calm he hoping that he'd get the job because he knew he was going to be the best person at the end of the day and um I I feel what he says a lot. He wants the peace and the calmness to be at home because, you know, with his resume, he's he's had to go through a lot. Same as Trump. He's had to go through a lot. And the people has had to go through a lot with these uh, high prices that uh, Biden has gave us. So let's keep going, guys. One of the most pro-labor Republicans in Congress, sure. you were out there with automakers who were striking a few months back. And you've been very broadly supportive of tariffs. Um, why are you opposed to President Biden then putting tariffs on batteries and electric vehicles and other technology from China? It seems inconsistent. Well, I think there are two things here. First of all, many of the tariffs that Joe Biden has endorsed in the last couple of weeks are tariffs that he ran against in 2020. But now that he sees that Donald Trump is leading him he in the polls, he's adopting the Donald Trump agenda. That's not actually being a good policy president, that's shifting on politics because you know you're about to lose. Well, he's this is also targeted important. these pretty there's another, directly. There's a second thing, Margaret, that's really important here is Biden's entire agenda such that it exists has been about protecting green energy jobs at mm -hmm. the expense of the industrial heartland. If you were in Wisconsin, Michigan, or Pennsylvania, you are not being empowered or enriched by Joe Biden's green energy agenda. So him applying tariffs on the green agenda stuff, does it help steel makers? Does it help natural gas? workers? Does it help the heart of the American economy? The answer is no, which is another reason why Donald Trump would make a much better president. Well, you know, it's what Chinese electric vehicles are like less than 2% of the market. But the point here well, is but it's a lot of the all supply tariffs, though, on, on, but to your point, all tariffs, which you're, you seem to be in favor of, they're inflationary. So how is the Trump Vance idea here going to help make things more affordable for people if you're putting taxes on goods they're purchasing well, from overseas? Well, I, I don't necessarily buy the premise there, Margaret. If you apply tariffs, really what it is is you're saying that we're going to penalize you for using slave labor in China and importing that stuff in the United States. What you end up doing is you end up making more stuff in America, in Pennsylvania, in Ohio, and in Michigan. That did not and happen I think in that, the Trump administration, though. Well, it, it actually did happen in the Trump administration, Margaret. Manufacturing you did jobs have, came did back? did have significant onshoring. You had significant increases in people investing in factory construction, but it takes time, Margaret. And that's one of the things, one of the reasons why I think that we need a second term of President Trump is this stuff is not going to happen overnight. The American heartland wasn't destroyed in, in, in four years. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be rebuilt in four years. But you really need to double down on this policy of bringing good jobs back to the heartland and, more importantly, making stuff in America. We have to be self-reliant yeah. as a country. Well, we haven't heard a lot of specific. So I'm really big on that on bringing the jobs, you know, back here to where they belong. Because why would you want to get some stuff from there for really cheap Then they mark up the price here when people here could be working in those same type of factories with better conditions, way, of course, way better conditions. And making the same stuff here, we save money and we're also employing our people.
right? Instead of just employing those people where they're making a little bit of nothing and you're making everything and you just tax us for everything that you want to sell to us. It doesn't make sense to me. And Trump has, has done a really good job on bringing some of those jobs. He can't get all of them, but bringing some of them jobs back and making sure the American people can work. Because right now, man, that's that's what people need to do. A lot of people don't want to work. A lot of people don't want to go out there and work because everything's still expensive. You work 40 hours, four weeks, and then you just steal, just turned over because everything just marked up. You still turned over. No one can buy a house. No one can get these cars that they want to get. Man, barely can make a sandwich nowadays, man. You barely can make a sandwich. You barely can keep your phone on. You barely could, could, could keep the Wi-Fi, the lights on. You barely could just keep the real things. Barely could afford good toilet paper, man. You barely could afford good toilet paper. Man, we... It's, we, we're just in real dark times right now. We, we really just need to make sure we go out and we vote. We, I, I, I'm going to keep saying we need to go out. We need to vote. We need to make sure we get the right person in office. Because, man, it's, it's getting wild. It's getting wild, I'm telling you. And today, not, not today, just from today on forward, we need, we need to be holding hands. We need to be locking in together, man, because together we, 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 we could defeat these people. Together we can. Let, let's keep going. I mean, there's been ranges of a 10 percent to 60 percent tariffs. Do you know what the plan is? Well, look, I'm not going to speak for Donald Trump, but I certainly agree that we need to apply some broad based tariffs, especially on goods coming in from China and not just solar panels and EV stuff. We need to protect American industries from all of the competition. Because here, here's the thing, Margaret, the reason China beats us, it's not because they have better workers. It's because they're willing to use slaves right. to make things right. there. We want, American, we want American workers to make this stuff at good wages. I want to ask you about some of the things you've said about American universities. I know you've been very critical sure. of them. You gave an interview in February. You said the closest conservatives have ever gotten to successfully dealing with the left-wing domination of universities is Viktor Orban's approach in Hungary. I think his way has to be the model for us, not to eliminate universities, but to give the choice between survival or taking a much less biased approach to teaching. He seized control of state universities and put them in foundations that were then run by his allies. Is that what you're advocating be done in the United States? Well, Margaret, what you're seeing in the United States, actually, is that universities are controlled by left-wing foundations. They're not controlled by the American taxpayer. And yet the American taxpayer is sending hundreds of billions of dollars to these universities every single year. I don't want taxpayers I, controlling education, necessarily. I, is that I, what you're advocating I, for, federal government? Margaret, what I'm advocating control? for is for taxpayers to have a say in how their money is spent. Universities are part of a social contract in this country. They educate our children. They produce important intellectual property. They get a lot of money because of it. But if they're not educating our children well and they're layering the next generation down in mountains of student debt, then they're not meeting their end of the bargain. I think it's totally reasonable to say there needs to be a political solution to that problem. Well, America's universities still attract talent from around the world as You've went to one of America's very top schools. Look, there but, are still good but, things about American universities, but it's going in the wrong direction, Margaret. But, so, but Victor Orban in particular, as you know, I mean, he, he rewrote the Constitution. He neutered the courts. He has tried to control the media. These are not necessarily conservative principles. So why would you want to mimic him? Well, look, I'm not endorsing every single thing that Victor Orban has ever done. I don't know everything he's ever done. What I do think is that on the university, on the university principle, the idea that taxpayers should have some influence in how their money is spent at these universities, it's a totally reasonable thing. And I do think that he's made some smartness. That's really weird because you could just not like Trump at all. Because let, let's say you agree with one thing and then they're like, Trump did this, Trump did that, Trump did that. It's not fair to sit there and say that because a lot of people out there they won't tell you the truth, but there's some things that Trump has said that they agree with, but they vote blue no matter who. So that's why you're stuck with the times we're in now in these type of debates, because they're just they're just pointless to have, man. You're, you're sitting there trying to nitpick everything that this guy does, but he just told you what he supports from him and what he doesn't support. But you still want to go after him on it. It doesn't make sense. Let's keep going, guys. Decisions there that we could we could learn from the United States. Well, he was just welcomed at Mar-a-Lago, and and as you know, Leader McConnell just spoke out on the floor of the Senate this past week after Xi Jinping visited Hungary. He's trying to broker trade deals. They're brokering trade deals not just with Russia but with Iran. Orban, because of this, McConnell said it should be a red flag for anyone seriously concerned about competition with China. So why take any policy cues from a man and a country and a strategy? 
cozying up to America's adversaries. Well, look, Margaret, Hungary is a nation of 10 million people. America is a nation of 330 million people in the most important economy in the world. I don't think that we should take every cue, but I actually have to reject the premise here because why is Viktor Orban getting closer to China? In part because American leadership is not making smart decisions. We are pushing other nations into the arms of Chinese, the Chinese because we don't make enough stuff, because we pursue a ridiculous foreign policy very often. We have to be more self-reliant. I don't like China. I don't like that China has stolen a lot of American jobs. The reason they've done it is because yeah. American leadership has made bad decisions. But that's you, our fault, and that's something we can fix as Americans. You, you've talked a lot about the, the need for the United States to pivot to Asia and let sure. the Europeans focus on Europe. But Xi Jinping is focusing on Europe. Why would you cede influence? You're, well, because you've really been opposed to helping Ukraine in its fight. You've said a lot of things that are... Well, suggested that you let, just let want me, to pull, let, pull me back. let me address that point, Mark. First of all, I think the reason that we have to be smart in Ukraine is we don't have a strategy. What is Joe Biden trying to do? What is another $60 billion accomplishing that $120 billion hasn't? We have to have a smart strategy to spend American taxpayer dollars. But, but on this... percent of it but funds on the, the U.S. Europe, defense industrial but Margaret, base but from on, the on supplemental On this question, just Europe passed. and China and the intertwinement between those two, look, the reason Europe has become weaker is because they've de-industrialized. And why have they de-industrialized? Because they pursued a green energy agenda following the lead of the Biden administration, and that necessarily empowers China and Russia. We need to acknowledge that it's our decisions that are making these countries stronger. We need to fix that, not whine at countries that have well, 10 million people. Or, or people just like cheap stuff, no matter where they live, right? So and they right. look for cheaper providers. Well, they'd love to have cheap but, energy in Europe, and they don't have it because of the policies of the green energy lobby. I want to ask you about abortion, because we see sure. it in our polling as so much. You see how she didn't say anything about that. Listen, listen. Stuff, no matter where they live, right? So and they look for cheaper providers. Well, they'd love to have cheap but, energy in Europe, and they don't have it because of the policies of the green energy lobby. I want to exactly. ask you about abortion because we see sure. it in our polling as so motivating. So she's going to keep throwing shots, keep throwing shots. Now she's trying to ask about abortion. She's just trying to just twist them up in his words, man, and it's just not working, honestly. But President Trump has adopted this position that it should be states that control sure. abortion access. You said back in 2022 that... A proposal to limit abortion access after 15 weeks of pre pregnancy was something you would support and some minimal national standard. What is the minimum national standard that you want the federal government to have on abortion? Well, look, Margaret, I think that, first of all, we have to acknowledge that political reality is, I think, really motivating a lot of these considerations. What Donald Trump has said, which is very consistent with what I said during my own campaign, is that the gross majority of abortion policy is going to be made at the state level. Mm -hmm. And I actually think if you compare his view of saying, look, this is a tough issue, we need to let people debate and decide this very tough issue in this new environment where it's been kicked right. back to Democratic legislators. Federal but, 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 Margaret, compare this to the Biden administration approach is we want Christians to perform abortions and we want American taxpayers to fund late term abortions. I That's think the Trump true. approach, That's that is absolutely prohibited what under the endorsed. Hyde Amendment. But so you don't have a, a minimum national standard. Margaret, what I've said consistently is the gross majority of policy here is going to be set by the states. I am pro-life. Yeah. I want to save as many babies as possible. And sure, I think it's totally reasonable to say that late-term abortions should not happen with reasonable exceptions. Mm -hmm. But I think Trump's approach here is trying to settle a very yeah. tough issue and actually empower the American people to decide it for themselves. Senator Vance, thank you for joining us Thanks, today. Margaret. Not much to say on the end of this video, guys, but it's obvious that she doesn't want what's best for the nation. She wants to sit there and nitpick everything he's doing when she really can't provide anything good towards... The real problems that we face today, the real problems that we face today are huge compared to what she's doing. She's just sitting there trying to make someone look horrible on her show so the face of the nation could have the next hit piece. That's all she's doing, guys. Let me know what you think about this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe if you're new. And as always, let me know what to react to. We're out.